So now some of you, not all of you, but some of you, when it comes to the high evolutionary, this is what you think of. I'm not gonna lie though, when I saw this, I was like, Kevin Hart might be on the song. Right now I have a raccoon problem, people. Not raccoons, a raccoon, one raccoon. This raccoon's a bitch. But try not to get it twisted. That was the MCU version of the High Evolutionary. The Marvel Comics version? He's like Wu-Tang Clan. He ain't done the fuck with. Which you're about to see in this comic. My name is Dorian, this is SEM Comics, and we are continuing our coverage of the fall of the House of X with X-Men number 30. So the story starts off in the treehouse with Jean and Scott look like they're getting it on. So you know it's a dream because they're happy and X-Men never happy. So all of a sudden the place starts to burn around them and then Scott goes to Jean and is like, is this real? So then Scott's like, then why are you on fire? And then Jean goes, I am the fire. I'm using that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm using that. Like next time I'm playing a video game and I'm just tearing it up instead of saying I'm on fire. I'm like, nope, I am the fire. So then we see that he's talking to an orchid psychologist and he's telling her about his dream. And then he starts breaking everything down to her. He's like, I know I'm in an orchid's black site prison without my ruby quartz visor. That's obvious. From the accents of the guards, I'm in Paris. I'm assuming that Ben Yurik's expose pretty much made you guys move this sham trial outside of America. And I'm assuming that I'm in my first uniform because it's the most recognizable. So then the psychologist goes, well, let's talk about your deceased wife. And he goes, not deceased. She's just not here. And she's like, Cyclops, it was just a dream. And he goes, the thing is, Dr. Goldsmith, it's not a dream if it's real. So now we cut the bargain bin sinister. Don't look at me like that. That was a one video thing. He was cool in one video. He's an asshole and everything else. So the psychiatrist walks up and goes, the man is, you know, bargain bin had to cut her right off. The mutant. He's a mutant, not a man. So it's pretty much lets to know that Cyclops shows tall tale signs of torture and he suffered a psychotic break. He's ready to offer no defense to the sham trial and pretty much he wouldn't be fit for trial. And then Bargain Ben reminds her that she has a mutant in her family and might have to go on a camping trip for the rest of his life. So he feels like if Cyclops is willing to offer no defense, it'll be a fast trial, cut and dry, and they'll win. And the psychiatrist let him know, like, look, he's talking pretty much like he's exactly where he wants to be. And if you guys watch my video of the fall of the House of X number one, or if you read the book, then you know that this trial already happened and that this book is pretty much playing catch up. So now we cut to the lovers, Sink and Talon. Now, for those of you guys that know, it's kind of bear with me, but for those who don't, let me give you a quick rundown on these two. So Sink, X-23, and Darwin had a mission to go into the vault. In the vault, time moves very fast. Centuries in there can only take days out here. Sink pretty much had to use X-23's powers to live as long as they did in there. They were together for centuries and created a love affair. Sink eventually got out, uh, but X-23 and Darwin were left in there. So because they assumed that Darwin and X-23 were pretty much dead in there, they recloned X-23. And because this X-23 had no memory of what happened in there, pretty much the love affair was over. But then Forrest decided to go back in there. He actually found X-23 and Darwin. Darwin pretty much mutated to a level to where he was like an AI now. I don't think he even had a physical body anymore. And he got out X-23. So now there are two X-23s running around here. The original one that went into the vault is now calling herself Talon and she is now back with Saint. So now we cut to the Morlock Tunnel and we have Tony Stark, Miss Marvel, Sink, Talon, Spider-Man, and Gold Goblin. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think I would like the character of Gold Goblin, but I'm actually gonna be kind of sad when he goes back to being the Green Goblin, but you know he is. So they pretty much figure out a way to counteract the effects that Orcus put into the Krakoan drugs that make people go crazy and start killing themselves. The problem is that they don't know how they're gonna be able to mass distribute it to everybody and do it in a way that Orcus will find out. And the Gold Goblin is actually against it because they haven't 
properly tested the drug to see if it's even safe. And then Spider-Man chimes in and goes, that's a first for Norman Osborn. So the Spider-Man brings up Sauron, that is the dude that is like a pterodactyl and he wants to turn everybody into dinosaurs. And Spider-Man's like, what if that tech already exists? So the sink's like, you know what, Spider-Man? That is actually, and Spider-Man cuts him off and goes, yeah, I know, that's a dumb idea. And he goes, no, that's actually a brilliant idea because I know just who has that tech, the high evolutionary. And Sink feels like that the high evolutionary owes him one because a while back, the high evolutionary wanted a drop of Sink's blood really bad and Sink finally gave it to him and pretty much was like, all right, I gave you my blood, now you owe me one. So Iron Man has to meet up with Firestar, Spider-Man the Gold Goblin, pretty much got other business to take care of so their guest appearance is over and Miss Marvel has homework to do. So it's gonna be Sink and Tylen making the trip to counter Earth. So now over the Atlantic Ocean, Firestar is flying and she must let Tony know that even though he has a stealth suit on, she can see the word displacement from his jet boost so he might as well go ahead and come out. Tony asks how's everything going and she pretty much lets him know that the AI contingency is pretty much thinking that she's a traitor and wanted to kill her but she was able to book her way out of it. But she doesn't know how long it's going to pretty much work and before they're pretty much on to her. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that was in X-Men 28 cards right here and the link will be in the description so tony pretty much lets her know that she won't have to be undercover for too much longer um, they're working on a way to be able to distribute the drugs and once they start the war they can get her out of there so sink and tylen once they get to counter earth they got to go through the normal paces there are creatures there that they have to fight right away there are other creatures that want to rebel against a high evolutionary and they join sides with sink and tylen and they pretty much make their way to the High Evolutionary's castle or tower or whatever it is. So once they step in, High Evolutionary's pretty much waiting on them with his daughter. And High Evolutionary's like, look, I offered you a gift. You didn't want to accept it. You lost your dominance of Earth. And now you want to come here and try to take the gift from me? And Sink's like, we don't got to take anything. You could just offer it to us again. And then Talon's like, you consider it payment for Sink's blood. And the High Evolutionary is like, I already paid for that, because I let humanity live. So then Tylen's like, you really want to fight us? And the High Evolutionary is like, I haven't decided yet. So the High Evolutionary's daughter, she's a hothead, and she's like, look, let me fight them both to the death. If they win, then they can take their little gift. So this thing's like, fine, Karma's a bitch. And he uses Karma's power to pretty much break down the High Evolutionary's daughter to where she remembers a High Evolutionary actually working on her, and she's pretty much done. So that High Evolutionary is like, how disappointing, talking about his daughter. But I did not agree to what she said. She said it, I didn't. Then he goes, you can keep your prize if you survive me. So then Sink's like, one more time, darling. And then Tylen's like, since we're on counter Earth, do I beat him clockwise or counterclockwise? And it shows that they cut the High Evolutionary. So now we cut to the bloom where Feelong is talking to Firestar. And pretty much Feelong is preparing for Mars to attack Earth, which is Storm and Morocco mutants. And he's like, but we got a trap waiting for him. Every Sentinel is gonna be there to pretty much take him out. And Firestar's like, well, there's also some good people. Who do we save? And Feelong's like, oh, Firestar, you're special. They're not. So then we cut back to the Morlock tunnels and we see Sink has a device and he gives it to Tony Stark and Tony Stark's like great you got it congrats I'll start a blue nor cure and then he goes are you okay and Sink's like we'll live so then we see Talon asks the Sink about what happened on counter earth because she can't remember and he starts to explain and then all of a sudden Miss Marvel comes out of nowhere and is like hey Sink who are you talking to and then he goes it's been a long couple of days so then we see Sink talking to Talon and she just goes, oh my God. And then we see on the next page, it says, it was a short fight and the lovers lost. So pretty much he pulls a Nino Brown. He got sink in the chokehold and he pretty much told him, sit your $5 ass down before I make change. Not only is he making change, but he's also making Talon stab herself in the throat and then in the heart. So how do you kill somebody that can heal from any injury? You disintegrate. And that's exactly what he does. Talon is disintegrated to where she is nothing but a burnt outline on the floor. So then he's pretty much like, I just took a girl, so I feel like that's payment enough. So here you go, you can have it now. If that ain't some gangster sh 
I don't know what is. The name's like Be Gone, Sink of Rokoa. We will meet again at a time of my choosing. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the high evolutionary ain't nothing to fuck with. So then on the last page, we see him looking into a mirror and he's pretty much talking to Talon. And he's like, you're still alive, Talon. I use Gene's power to pull your mind inside mine. I'm like a Cerebro. I'll hold on as long as I can. I'll fix it. I'll find a way to fix it. I promise. Now, this hurts me to my heart to say, but I think that's the last time we're going to see Talon.